Welcome to How to Explain Media Theory. Today, I am going to explain to you the concept of cultural hegemony, as formulated by the political scientist Antonio Gramsci. Using three items. Firstly, a clear container. Secondly, a litre of milk. And thirdly, some red food colouring. Now imagine that this clear container is dominant society. Now imagine that this milk is what makes up that society. It is made up of people, places, practices. It is wholesome. It is white, it is clean, it is good for you. Now, imagine that this food colouring is something radical and dangerous. Reality television, punk, pop music, pornography. There it sits on the surface, easy to spot, disrupting the milk but not disturbing it. Now, hegemony, cultural hegemony, is this wooden spoon and it stirs in the radical element into the society to try to make it disappear, to dilute its power. Now the radical element is no longer dangerous, but the milk has changed just a little bit. It's a bit pinker and generally back to the status quo. That's cultural hegemony. Mom, I remember when uh, we were growing up, she looked for black dolls to give us, and she couldn't find any. She found one black boy doll that my sister got. She was so keen to like, to give us uh, uh, to feed our subconscious, and now we get to give this to our children. Well, this is so important. It's such a big black deal. Why do you think black superheroes matter? Specifically, why does Black Panther matter? I spent a lot of time, you know, as a youth looking up to, to white superheroes and, and buying into to that idea. We haven't seen a lot of black superheroes on our screens and it's refreshing to have the continent of Africa um, being explored in this way. Oh, my inner child is so happy right now. It's important to see yourself or a, a, a reflection of yourself, a reflection of a member of your family as a king. To have a black panther, a black, a black man superhero and his entire nation is powerful because it means that we can see ourselves in, in this movie quite directly. To be able to you know be clear that we can accomplish and do anything even if it seems superhuman we have the capacity to make things happen. I feel like to reach that hero inside of yourself um, it's important for that to look like you at times or for it to be the possibility to be a possibility that it looks like you. You know, he's just incredibly noble. You know, um, and, and, that, and that idea of nobility is not something that's often applied to, to people who come from and live on and, and have access to the continent of Africa. To take us to, to this land, running a nation, a king and a hero, mm -hmm. and, and, and not alone, but heroes there that support you, your mother, your spiritual advisor, mm -hmm. your counsel, your friend, um, your general, your love your your siblings without limitation or without boundaries 
Mm. So it's it's aspirational in that. There's a way of reclaiming and reestablishing and redefining a history that was kind of given to you. And they're gonna be kids who are gonna be able to like ingest this kind of content mm -hmm. while they're developing before all the narratives and isms are placed upon them and who they can and should be. And for them to be able to see this at that age tells them that the ceiling isn't where you see it. There's no ceiling. You could do that thing. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance, all to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law abiding, until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. I've been a member for a long time, and my boys are members, and they're much better shooters than I am. I'll tell you, they know more about guns than any. I don't know, there might be two or three people in this room, but believe it or not, not many. So to get the endorsement, believe me, is a fantastic honor.